we just discuss concept of governance concept of governance okay good governance sorry concept of good governance that i think that unit already covered but in continuation of that i just want to give you some case study so that you will understand clearly because you can expect lot of questions from this topic so instead of taking another unit I, of course i will be taking but i just want to discuss once again about the concept of good governance some examples and uh, followed by a case study on that based on that okay so naturally whether it is state government whether it is central government whatever is there or local self government we always expect good governance actually okay by our political leaders <coughs> whoever it is whoever it is whichever party they rule but generally people expect we have got a lot of expectation from these people now normally a good governance means but whether it is there or not you just make a comparison but i am just telling you a good governance these are the attributes a government good government should have one one is participation so <laughs> participation that means arbitrary manner we should not take any decision and uh, autocratic style of functioning will not help any democracy democratic principle okay so in consultation with uh, our people they should uh, do the job otherwise it will be a utter failure okay number 2 empowerment on the day i discuss we have to give delegation what are the we have to empower uh, each and everybody for executing the job in a desired level number 2 then number 3 accountability is lacking normally accountability see who are is ruling there is no accountability there is no accountability see for example yesterday i don't want to tell any anybody even today also you can see tomorrow also you can see different political parties are making you know now it is kerala is also having some election or something like that for the legislative assembly i know we are not at all discussing any political party but do you see the important things actually whenever they make uh, any uh, election uh, what is that uh, their uh, you know promises or whatever is there uh, should i one party and today another party they have to tomorrow tomorrow or another party the eradication of uh, this thing you know removal of corruption nobody is mentioning anything that is they are telling that we will do that you know we will give it uh, 5000 rupees uh, something Uh, you know welfare uh, pension that this all the all this okay it is good but what about removal of corruption corruption plays a vital role because india rank out of you know very 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 poor way in the corruption this thing okay that is the reason why uh, among world countries india's ranking is uh, you know very bad very bad so towards that Uh, you know what type of uh, initiative we are taking our rulers are taking eh? that is also there so in the election promise you no know, we will give a very good uh, this thing free uh, you know why still we remember onam mahabali akbar the great ashoka the great why those rulers they used to go they and they used to inquire from the general public about their difficulties and uh, they they you sh they should uh, resolve that issues and here it is not like that you know either they are sitting in the secretariat and uh, mingling with the people sometimes it is lacking with the result of which genuine grievances are not addressed to now what what happened here capacity to for good governance in capacity to formulate and implement sound policies by the government with due respect for citizens see please remember capacity to formulate and implement sound policies by the government with the due respect for citizens sometimes it is lacking governance can be construed as a constitute in six different elements one voice and accountability political stability should be there very very important actually 
we are having alliance with so many where uh, that of course i am going to tell about that later on lot of trouble we are facing because all these parties are multi at the same they are having their own ideas so you know what happen we have to bring them into you know common this thing it will be very very difficult actually see kerala congress is having their own uh, policy uh, cbm is having another policy bjp is having another policy oh you got these people are all you know having alliance or something like the ideas are different actually it will affect the real ruling the governance of a state or a country that is the problem because you know merely 20 parties were the in the central government uh, you know when vajpayee atal bihari vajpayee even manmohan singh uh, even nda government or upa government whatever is there and 20 parties are having 20 different ideals ideologies and whatever is there you know so it will be very very difficult to rule a particular country that is also the self interest also okay now policy of policy making is also lacking then public service delivery is also lacking quality of police when we make a rules it is pro citizen or uh, you know when we suppose if you are in your company if you make any policy that is pro employees or whatever is there you know good policy sound policy we should make okay then rules and uh, rules of law there are laws and we have to adhere to here also our uh, you know constitution is there many other laws are there we are supposed to abide by the by those rules or uh, rule of law then control of corruption no need explanation corruption it is going like anything uh, you know no without any control each and every party is equally responsible for this and uh, there is political funding this is a very very dangerous step and each and every election you know very well that uh, many many multinational companies and uh, from foreign this thing also uh, political funding is uh, i will tell you one thing there is some time back you know uh, some, uh, in kerala believers church some uh, ed they were uh, you know raiding them and uh, one day from their car porch uh, the dicky of a uh, car they got a crores cash bundle of notes now where it has gone nobody knows where is the case nobody knows what is the reason everybody knows okay yeah, what is the reason everybody knows in a dicky do you think that he is a fool like really that uh, 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 to keep a cash of bundles of uh, you know 2000 rupees cash in a dicky in a car porch eh, these are all you know so flimsy ground they are telling some excuse that the where money has gone now where is the what is the position of the case now there are many 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 uh, thing like that you know that you know the political funding is creating a lot of problem actually uh, you know some people are offering plane aeroplane for the elect, election doing election work so, i don't want to tell you many things are the and uh, i will tell you in my college days in our area one bus owner was there and uh, he was having more than 160 or 170 car, uh, buses flying from one destination to another destination many 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 routes he was controlling he was the king there the, the but what happened no inspector vehicle inspector will touch his vehicle check his vehicle overloading and other thing because he used to tell that i used to give money to each and every political party during election time so nobody was having courage to inspect his vehicle or overloading or whatever is like that you know very well what is going on that creates lot of problem actually political funding you have to please them also no? today's newspaper you can see the front page when i open you can see that three bjp mlas i am not uh, talking about any but, but you see the matter not uh, individuals front page of the newspaper that trivandrum uh, three people are contesting election in various constituencies before filing the nomination or, and after filing or whatever is there they were approaching bishop of trivandrum arch bishop or whatever is there bishop bishop and uh, you either went there to seek blessing okay it is good take a blessing from everybody but is it a sincere blessing 
so they ne suppose if they are selected or elected so naturally they will also expect something from them no so every every where it is like that if all political parties are like uh, parties it create problem pro uh, afterwards you know there will not be any good governance actually because under pressure they, they will influence not at the i am not 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 talking about the bishop or somebody else like that if you go then they they can influence your uh, this thing and uh, government also you will not be able to rule the state or the country properly because they will have uh, uh, they will suggest you how to rule what what policy you have to make they will suggest you so avoid such thing and uh, you know justice in a neutral way you have to function you know, of course nowadays uh, these type of things are required that is the quality of the ability that is there. have you seen that uh, you know today yesterday newspaper and other thing last yesterday was the last day for filing the nomination and they were declaring their asset each and every candidate i was shocked to see that several crores of rupees people were having uh, you know uh, acres of land ornaments 150 uh, pavan you know something like that like this lot of power, uh, money they were having now what is the idea of you know seeking election out to 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 not to serve the people to serve themselves several crores of rupees they are having so what i am telling they cannot sh- uh, give a good governance because uh, they are motive something else okay now good, good governance means enhance in the quality of life i on the day told you what is quality of life priority of the poor that is the good governance i am telling priority of the poor then another thing advance uh, advances women's issues so, uh, ladies are having lot of issues actually we have to uh, consider them uh, sympathetically or you know it is our right to you know they have got equal right to get safeguard their interest also they are suffering a lot in their working places and other thing and uh, you know whatever uh, help uh, the government can do they have to do that also it, uh, then salary wages equal remuneration everything we have to pay then independent judiciary no further explanation i already told several time then then uh, sustain the environment uh, that is our government duty to maintain proper environment and uh, we, it is going in a very dangerous way because in all cities you know highly polluted actually i have seen that uh, two three days back there was a report that among uh, most uh, you know, very very dirty uh, cities i think india ranks and the 10 cities of india is ranking the the poorest that the worst the cities uh, you know as regard uh, environment is concerned pollution is concerned okay D- delhi of course number top then one then create necessary opportunities for employment and other please underline this word eh? i am going to d- give you a ca- um, uh, tell you a case study out of this it is the government duty to create the necessary opportunities for employment and other livelihoods underline the word what i am telling create necessary opportunities for employment and other behavior then uh, you know efficient oh, sorry sorry create necessary opportunities for employment and other livelihoods okay livelihoods that now afterwards the after immediately after this i will just give you a case study on this then you will come to know what is governance now efficiency effectiveness transparency adequate investment of people investment of people means you know good health education everything you know that is investment whatever money you are investing for that it is not a loss it is a profit only okay we, we want good healthy citizen okay then economic growth does not cause uh you know this environmental degradation economic no opening factories mainly manuf- a lot of manufacturing unit but it should not affect the environmental uh, this thing we have to save god because otherwise it will be difficult to live in this world okay public enough i told you uh that is okay then human rights then ensuring responsiveness from the air. then who governs how well who governs and how well you think or up think about that your own government central government or whatever government who governs and how well 
it is up to you to judge then distribution of power and resources in the society distribution of power and resources in the society effective institution efficient methods of operation see we are establishing many many institution public sector undertaking many other things state but how it is operated you know functioning also you have to control effectively all are functioning properly you, you have created so many uh, you know dispensaries and other things you know lab laboratory uh, during uh, covid whether they are uh, well equipped are they having a proper facility people are there to handle this nurses are there doctors are there supporting staff is there you know this type of things you have to keep in mind then uh, another thing that uh, widening gap between uh, income and the capabilities information access accessibility cooperation between uh, the government and the civil society organizations then collective problem solving any problems will be there collective problem solving it is national issue you suppose you know during uh, you know flood or natural calamities it is a collective responsibility collective problem solving method we should adopt self help groups openness use of information technology based services improving the productivity of employees these are all uh, required uh, to get a more productivity redressal of cities and grievances these are all the qualities of good governance right to information participation and decentralization market oriented reforms it is required people oriented development is required and multi pronged strategies are required for administering that you know for giving proper i mean good governance okay now this is governance how a government has to function now i am just giving you a case study patiently listen to this okay no politics nothing is there this is a case study, not this is written by an eminent personality world renowned personality originally he is a malayali and uh, this article appeared just two three days back three four days back just see you know for the last several first let us talk about it kerala and industries and employment opportunities now here what i am telling what is governance we are we are all discussing governance no this is a case study see if you read this how effective governance we were having for the last uh, several decades kerala was also ruled by many many parties we are not mentioning who who who, who what about that no ultimate result you see this is written by a person a eminent person who is padma bhushan as well as having nearly 40 honorary phd so this is not i am not telling this okay now patiently listen to this you are mpa professionals future when you are holding a responsible post you have to keep in mind this aspect for information till my retire retirement from the government i was always keeping these type of things in my mind and honestly i was executing my job to the to the my entire satisfaction that is the only satisfaction i am having just see here we we can transform kerala you know this example i am just giving you how the governance now this is kerala in if it is india or karnataka or tamil nadu it is different now you see we are talking about kerala we have to transform kerala to its original glory and splendor that is like uh, our mahabali And like that, we cannot go back like that. But see what this gentleman has written. I will just read Kerala, which was go this is governance. I am telling you, this is not a story. I am telling you, this is connected with your topic. How it should be governed. Tomorrow you will be handling. You are handling going to handle very senior post. At that time, whatever post will you know be you know. you can contribute to the improvement development of the society you have to do that is the thing which i want to convey to you through this case study kerala which was 
God's own country is no more no is no more so now. There have been hardly any infrastructure projects completed. See, don't ask me any question because I hundred percent I agree with this. Having travel traveled all over the country, whatever articles it is there, hundred percent I agree with this. This is not, and we are not blaming any party, but it is a real story. Kerala, which was God's own country, is no more so now. There have been hardly any infrastructure projects completed. Okay, except the Kochi Metro. During the past 20 years, 20, not we are not talking about one party, 20 years, not even one industry has come here. Not even one industry, major industry has come here. Now, some of the good industries started by persons like Kochose Chitalipalli were forced to shift to other states due to militant labor. It is true, I have seen in Walayar. Tamil Nadu border in Tamil Nadu side, this company is there already. Okay. Even the Kitex who are also telling that the government is not supporting, we will shift from here to other states. Please remember, Apollo already shifted from this to other state. Remember this. So, for the last 20 years, not even a single industry has come up and even some people started, persons like Gojau Sahib Chittalipalli, were forced to shift to other states due to militant labor. Don't disagree with me. It is true. And the work culture, the militant trade unionism, high cost of labor, unreliable and costly electric energy, unaffordable cost of land, and governmental lethargy to protect nurturing industries are the issues in our beautiful state high degree of corruption and nepotism you know what it is autocracy okay at every level no governance we are discussing about governance no governance okay government is only for party people any party any anybody it is only for party people and poor delivery of developmental projects. Now here, one more thing I just want to, what all projects are the central government projects are there? That of course it is there. We are talking about private as well as some other. Now here, another thing that the government should bring an entirely work culture and bring industries which can create wealth and job opportunities and bring good re revenues to the government revenue is not there yesterday also i have seen that uh, our uh, present government is uh, giving election manifesto in which uh, they were increasing five thousand rupees as a pension or whatever is there from where they are bringing they have to take load you create revenue no you have to by way of taking loan from other sources and paying this type of thing Okay, it is good. We have to give to the people. I am not telling, but created. Why don't you make a little efforts to generate revenue for the state? This is applicable to all. Okay, now Kerala needs development in five important areas infrastructure, industry, health, education, and tourism. Kerala must have stable and dynamic government to ensure. Development in all uh, areas mentioned above. Now, here I will not uh, elaborate. I will conclude with a small paragraph. There are many. It is regrettable that no party has promised clean administration, good governance, free corruption, free of corruption and nepotism. The electorate is too mature to be hoodwinked by such fleeting soaps soap okay that promises you know the people should weigh the credentials of election candidates 
and exercise their franchise with the discretion lest they should suffer in silence over possible misgovernance in future as well. Next, Unit 9, the role of civil society organization. Today I am going to take, uh, see why, why I told uh, this introductory part about the governor, how it should be, how we are. Judge yourself whether it is correct or not. The matter, I am leaving the matter to you. We are not attaching any, any party, but how it should be because for the welfare of the citizen. Okay, now, remember by giving that uh, small, 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 small incentive or giving small promises, flimsy ground, it, you cannot uh, say that it is for the development purpose. Development means, you know, it is long way to, to go and uh, everlasting. That is development, not a uh, small, you know, uh, you know, a few months we got food grains and other things. Afterwards, nothing is there. Not like that. We have to live in this world, you know. So that type of steps we have to take uh, by considering the future, this thing also. Now, unit number 19, the role of civil society organization. Now, you know that last time we were talking about uh, neoliberal, market-oriented, uh, this thing, downsizing, nowadays it is going on. Uh, many companies, they are, you know, uh, merging with each other and many, many big, big companies are coming, you know, they are either, you know, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> stopping the operation or merging with somebody and, uh, you know, or uh, you know, many other ways also they are doing because to reduce the expenditure and manpower reductions, everything, downsizing is a reduction of manpower. Okay. Then, World Bank root of governance concept, the globalization discourse uh, tended to reinforce the state is now facing, being projected as a facilitator and the coordinator of the private and non-government sectors involved in government governance. See what happened here, private uh, organizations, private uh, organization as well as NGOs are also playing, uh, they are also doing uh, governance in addition to state government. Actually, they are also, you know, uh, many companies are there, NGOs are also there, they are also doing very good job. And uh, so they are helping the state uh, uh, for, you know, uh, the so state is becoming a facilitator. The state is providing help to this type of people to render good service to the citizen. Okay, now uh, various ways development. This includes a fundamental change in the, in the state's commitment to welfare, reduction of social security, provisions and disenchantment of people with the government policy. Listen, I am going to give you afterwards a beautiful case study. See, if government is not functioning properly, the people will not tolerate. See what happened? There come state government commitment, welfare, commitment to welfare, reduction of social security, pro security provision, and disenchantment of people with the government policy. This, I am going to give a case study later on, because the, if people are not happy, uh, you know, with the government policy, they will do some other way. Like uh, Keda Kampana, 2020. Okay, the case study I am giving out was 2020. Why it is it was uh, introduced? Why they started the activity? And about that, I will be discussing later on. So, if government is not rendering good, uh, good uh, this thing, sometimes people will be disappointed, and uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know repercussion will be there. Then, as a result, civic sector or civil society sector is emerging as a viable proposition to supplement. The, uh, or complement the function of the state in the market. So, private party also, uh, you know, they will also capture market and NGOs also will do it, doing the civil society is steadily, okay, emerging to facilitate and promote a non-state activity. What are the state is uh, doing? What non-state, uh, that is, what is, what is not, uh, you know, the government is not supposed to do that other people are doing. Okay, NGOs are doing that is market oriented, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, many, many activities, this type of people are also doing that. Okay. Uh, 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 uh,
പിന്നെ സാറിന് വിടാതെ അപ്പൊ നിങ്ങളോട് ആണ് പറയുന്നത് മാഡം പറയുന്നത് അതായത് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് അസൈൻമെന്റിനെ പറ്റിയിട്ട് എന്തിനെ പറ്റിയിട്ട് എന്തെങ്കിലും ഫർദർ ക്ലാരിഫിക്കേഷൻ ചെയ്യുന്നു ഒരു ഗൂഗിൾ മീറ്റ് ജസ്റ്റ് ഓർഗനൈസ് ചെയ്യാ ഏതാണ് ഡേറ്റ് ബട്ട് ഇൻഫോം ഡോക്ടർ പ്രേമ ഇൻ അഡ്വാൻസ് ഷീ ക്യാൻ റീച്ച് ഷെഡ്യൂൾ പ്രോഗ്രാം കേട്ടോ എന്നിട്ട് വി വിൽ ജസ്റ്റ് സ്പെൻഡ് സം ടൈം ആൻഡ് വി വിൽ ക്ലാരിഫൈ ഈച്ച് ആൻഡ് എവ്രി തിങ് അബൌട്ട് അസൈൻമെന്റോ വേറെ ഏതെങ്കിലും മാറ്റർ എന്തെങ്കിലും വെച്ചാൽ സംസാരിക്കുക അപ്പൊ ഗൂഗിൾ മീറ്റില് വി ക്യാൻ ഓക്കെ അപ്പൊ അത് നിങ്ങൾ ഡിസൈഡ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് മാഡത്തിനെ അറിയിച്ചാൽ മതി കേട്ടോ എന്റെ നമ്പർ ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ആർക്കെങ്കിലും മാഡത്തിന്റെ നമ്പർ അറിയില്ലെങ്കിൽ ചോദിച്ചോളൂ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു തരാം കേട്ടോ അത് നിങ്ങൾ അറിയിച്ചാൽ മതി മാഡത്തിനെ അപ്പൊ മാഡം ഞാന് സൊസൈറ്റി ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ വി ആർ ഡിസ്കസിംഗ് റോൾസ് ദിസ് ഇസ് യൂണിറ്റ് നമ്പർ നയൻറ്റി the role of civil society organization okay so the most crucial problem arises due to ambiguity surrounding the meaning of civil society which is sometimes con- uh, contrasted with the state as well as the market okay but sometimes the state uh, you know itself is seen as comprising the civil society the term civil society is generally defined as a particular group of society with a clearly demarcated purpose functions organizations and means in pursuit pursuit of its agenda it is however a rather broad concept that is hard to outline the debate continues about what civil society means and this spills over into relationship with the state and the market now the civil society thus in common parlance refers to networks and relationships of those groups that are not organized or managed by the state it is expected to identify major problems in society see what happens society will have lot of problems actually sometimes government is not not having either funds or whatever is there or they are not taking proper care or whatever is there and society is having mixed problems actually okay sometimes water is not available whether it is something environmental issues and so many other issues are to, will be there so articulate current issues empower the disadvantaged so there are disadvantaged advantaged people also in the society so to help them properly that also our, we we have got a responsibility so civil society encompasses enormous diversity okay people are different different you know coming from different 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 uh, this thing for example academic institution community level community based organization consumer protection body environmental campaign human rights forum labor union relief organization professional bodies religious institution women's network youth campaigns and sometimes even business association could fall under civil society they normally consumer protection is also the when you purchase something you know uh, even the the kerala is a consumer state actually we are uh, you know take, uh, getting all material from outside some you know whether it is rice whether it is anything you know coming from outside uh, this thing so what happened lot of sometimes you know Uh, complaints will be the material is not good or something like that so there is a consumer protection act so just summary i will just tell you uh, no recent changes are there or not i don't know but uh, previously i remember up to some 20 lakhs uh, cases district consumer there is district forum there is state forum there is central forum consumer protection so there is district consumer protection forum there is state consumer this is not there in the book uh, state consumer protection forum and central consumer protection forum now here uh, maybe the figure may change sometime see up to 20 lakhs claims the district consumer protection forum will uh, you know consider do that is if anybody is having any complaint you know uh, worth rupees uh, 20 20 lakhs or something like that you know it is coming below 20000 the district consumer forum will handle those issues if it is going exceeding up to 1 crore 
the state government will also uh, review those and take appropriate action. And uh, above one crore, then it will go to Central Consumer Protection Act. And may, sometimes, you know, the figure may change. Uh, what I am telling, from time to time, government is changing, 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 changing. But basic thing you remember, there is a state forum, there is a state, sorry, uh, district forum, there is a state, state forum, there is also a, a central forum. See, if central forum means, you know, it is above one crore, whatever claim is that will go to central forum. What is that, you know? Our district means collector also will be there and so many other, well, there will be one lawyer also, one NGO person also will be there. Same way in the state, concerned minister will be there, labor sec uh, that particular secretary will be there. So many other, one lawyer will be there, then NGO will be there. Same way in uh, central this thing, you know, each, uh, you know, consumer minister or secretary will be a member in that forum and uh, like the like the like constitution is there. So this is only to remove the grievances as regards consumer, uh, you know, what are products we are manufacturing and selling and if quality is not good, you can seek, uh, uh, you know, remedy from this type of forum, that is consumer protection. Okay. Then another you know, minor thing I am not talking about to that, that of course, labor union, relief organization, you know that uh, there are a lot of relief organization. Professional bodies, you know, lot of professional body, whether it is medical, whether it is chartered accountant, whether it is something else, lot of lot of professional bodies are the lot of things are the religious institution you know very well lot of religious institutions are the women's network kudumba sri one one example i will go to the the women's network youth campaigns okay like that then environmental campaign see there are a lot of uh, environmental uh, so many people are the ngos are there here they are always questioning about uh, the environmental aspects actually, you know, Peria River, all rivers in Kerala is, are highly polluted. By, by the grace of God, only 44 rivers are there. All the 44 rivers are uh, heavily polluted. And Peria is, you know, very well, which is the longest big river. It is highly polluted. Okay. And uh, uh, so we have to prevent, uh, as far as possible, such a, you know, Pollution, we have to control water pollution, whatever is there, because Kochi people are, you know, getting drinking water, this thing from Peria River. Okay, so uh, it will affect the health of the people, you know. So uh, nearby industries are dumping waste in the rivers. Nearby industries. You can see near all the rivers, you know, near uh, side by side, you can see many factories, you know. They are dumping all waste in the river, and that river, you know, the fishes, fish, fish, uh, and sometimes you know, death take place. So many things are there, and that death, uh, uh, that type of fishes, you know, people are consuming. It will badly affect the health of the people. Okay, this is the thing. Now, <clears throat> evolution of concept of civil society encompassing various perspectives and attempts to define its meaning and its scope with relation to the state. And the market, therefore, any discussion on civil society without analysis of the role of the state and the market and also their relationship with the society, with civil society is fraught with the problem. The, uh, that means, you know, the evolution of concept of civil society encompassing various perspective attempts to define its meaning and scope with relation to the state and the market. See, <clears throat> you can just, this is all minor thing you can read also. Where important things are, I will just tell you. The contemporary civil society, however, is more in tandem with the state. Even the concept of civil society generated by social movement, as has been rightly observed, does not necessarily deny or undermine the validity of modern state apparatus. See, many private corporate social responsibility is there. They, many, many private institutions are also rendering very good service to the human society. That of course, one example, afterwards I am giving that example to you. The new social movements have no desire to question the legitimacy of the state or directly take over the state. See, though you are doing, uh, you know, charity work or whatever is there, doesn't mean that you can overtake the state. You are functioning within the state. Some people are confused. So with that, uh, 
case study you will clear uh, you will be very 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 clear you can do that you can render uh, you know what or help you can do that to the society but you should remember you are functioning within the state state law is supreme you have to abide by the rules you cannot create your own rules or you know and all rules framed by you for doing the social service are to be approved by the competent authority set up by the state government okay so when that uh, bylaws rules and regulations which you are making whatever you know the association or uh, group efforts you are making for that there it should be registered there should be bylaws money is accountable balance sheet is to be prepared and submitted to the uh, concerned agencies on yearly basis and you know there should not be mis misappropriation of funds after all the state you know law we have to follow for each and every thing under you know there are firms and society charity whatever is there but under the you know charity people are doing lot of mischief people are taking money from you america many from usa also many other thing also they are making lot of uh, progress and we are establishing education institutions so many other things also sometimes they are not taking approval from the government also central government also we cannot accept any money from foreign country without the approval of rbi or central government okay these type of things are there you just close your eyes and see surrounding area sometime what is happening okay those rules are the people are there to out when we make rule people are also very clever how to violate the rules also that is also there so even though ngos are major constituents of civil society ngos they are you know rotary club lion club or oh, that club this club you know so many uh, this thing is there okay they still do not have to make the entire gamut of services so they are not uh, rendering all type of service they are rendering a specific uh, you know blood donation that is you know Uh, taking uh, care of you know old aged persons and many like that like that okay so as yes, ngo constitute a major part of civil society organization their organization needs to be looked into but however government support is required for this ngos please remember this they are doing very good service on behalf of the government otherwise government state government has to do this so always we have to motivate such people we have to financially we proper some grant something we have to give to them so that they can no they are uh, giving food to hundreds of people actually you know daily expenditure is there and they are taking care of that otherwise it will become the duty of the state actually okay so ngos should be encouraged and uh, ngos means you know uh, proper grant everything should be given to them in recent years ngos have begun to look beyond their local and regional roles and have become increasingly so they are doing interstate inter you know uh, uh, you know previously it was a limited uh, you know restricted to some area now they are functioning outside the state also even outside the country as well international civil uh, society you know it is the international civil society the, they are all rendering unesco undp un okay see they that is united nations children emergency fund united nations organization united nations development program they are all rendering services to the entire world okay very good service they are rendering okay they are all that mean one way they are assisting the country or the state as well okay now <coughs> another thing now Uh, sometimes civil society is referred to as the third sector third sector concept means you know no profit ngos state sector private sector see state sector private sector and ngo that is third sector okay now nevertheless it is generally agreed that civil society lies outside the public sector of ofi uh, official governance civil society is not the market it is non commercial civil society is not a market it is non commercial that is citizens are belonged young brothers and sisters okay now contemporary context of civil society contemporary meaning civil society as we just read regard it as a non commercial sphere that works in tandem with the market and the state 
okay it is believed that civil society can constructively contribute toward building a positive relationship between state and the market okay that is civil society that when I mean, doing license work with the state and market you know that type of things are there are many other reasons for the renewed interest in civil civil society civil society that we put forth has become a team okay of compelling interest throughout the world as citizen activism and demo democratization encounter post cold war the realignment of religious fundamentalism economic development and other forces like that like that it is going information technology revolution okay again civil society in the globalization context the growing role of ngos okay ngo you know during war and red cross many other things you know they are playing a big role wherever war injured people earthquake natural calamity everything our ngos are reaching there and helping the people okay then bilateral and multilateral aid we are giving lot of donation they are accepting donations and they are rendering service to the general public world over okay whenever some calamity comes then then there is international monetary fund world bank is there they are all helping to have good governance good governance now let me talk about the c aja now here sorry before that one more thing the who they are all world bank or whatever is there they are also amplify the voices of the poor poorest people in the decision that affect their lives improvement develop see there are many countries somalia congo many many other area and very 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 poverty ridden area this uh, uh, bodies are helping these people uh, for their daily survival and other things and they are taking donation from world world over and helping the people to uh, live comfortably who imf and many other area now relevant so, so, uh, civil society for governs, governance and development what is cbo cbo c calcutta b for bombay o orange that is cbo mean congressional budget office is a federal agency within the legal, legislative branch of united states of america government that provide budget and economic information to congress this is founded on 12 7 headquarter is in washington usa cbo once again i am just telling you cbo congressional budget office is a federal agency within the legislative branch of the united states of american government that provide budget and economic information to congress you know very well there is a legislative body there and like our indian parliament uh, lok sabha rajya sabha like that you know founded in that is started on 12 7 headquarters washington usa okay so cbo self help group these are they are all doing help to this with the reappearance of vibrant vibrant civil society this process has now become multiple actor centric with ngo cbo self help group acting a responsible stakeholders with the state in the market in the process of governing we are all you know uh, helping to uh, you know introduce very good the governance actually this type of agencies now uh, the core role of the civil society has to be realized without a developed civil society there cannot be an effective market system see developed society if it is not there 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 will not be market proper market system you know so developed society is very very essential to have a effective marketing system or well functioning government okay let us now look at the various endeavors in the area of civil society and see how these can be tapped to the facilitate development and governance there is an urgent need for the government civil society and private sector to work as partners partners in crucial area of participatory development hello there is an urgent need for the government civil society and private sector to work as partners 
in crucial areas of participatory development see for the pro uh, see what happened here earlier now you take the example our kerala people were not agreeing to have uh, private uh, uh, this thing investment earlier so without a uh, uh, public uh, private participation uh, development uh, cannot take place you know for constructing you know highways and so many other bridges everything always state government will not have money so we have to take the help of the private sector as well and hence uh, our kannur international airport and cochin international airport everything has come in public private participation okay they are doing very good service to the people see lot of employment they are providing and environmental this thing and uh, you know very well what type of uh, contribution cochin uh, international airport is doing that the only airport in the world you know that is you know solar energy solar energy you know there you know functioning okay solar energy okay and the only airport actually like that and there is no environmental issue and so many people are working and it has become fourth busiest airport in the country and the first public sector a uh, private public uh, you know this thing uh, prosperous airport you know that in a role model to other indian airport like okay, how it has to function and dynamic leader like kurian and without much government interference and the world credit will go to our former chief minister k karunagaran remember that okay a lot of protest was there when we wanted to construct the airport in uh, kochi lot of protest because it was agricultural land in nidumbasi area but he gave instruction to again kurian now the present managing director he was the collector of travan uh, kochi that is arnagulam and uh, he with the help of others started this airport previously we are having only a navy airport small airport now what is the now net uh, uh, this thing you know crores of people lakhs of people or lakhs of people and uh, you know connectivity throughout the world actually very effective functioning and uh, it has become uh, and uh, that is the reason why kannur international airport also the same way it started functioning okay so that is public or private participation is very very essential for the development of a country or the state say oh, uh, olden days you know we were Docking, eh, when we construct any uh, some, I know some. Uh, I remember once upon a time in uh, one party, I wanted to invest some money in Kerala for starting some electronic industries or something. The first thing we ask from, from where you are bringing the money. We cannot ask this type of question from you know those who are coming for investment. From where you are bringing the money, and the after, afterwards you know at that time he was invest, going to invest fourth of that. When this happened thirty five years back. Thirty-five to I think ah, uh, so at that time two thousand three thousand crore mean you know how much now? So they they wanted to start some industries either in Palakkad or something like that. But our people asked from where you are. First of all, source of income, money. We want to know like that. Nowadays you know it is not possible because if you want to have a development, you know this type of contribution, a public private private participation is very very essential. I will tell you one incident. Maruti Limited. Now, previously under it was under central government. Now, afterwards, you know, fifty-one share person share by Maruti, sorry, central government, and forty-nine uh, by Suzuki. Now, government is not having, I think, a share completely taken over by Suzuki, and Rusty Sisteri. They have become the largest automobile industries, perhaps you know, two wheel, three, four wheeler industry in the country today. Several, several brands and. Uh, Fortunately, one more thing I want to tell you, Kochi Nirnangulam. Yeah, I think uh, the dealer, yeah, the biggest dealer of Maruti. All brands are sold. The biggest dealer in all brands are, you know, it is here only in Kochi. Okay, uh, all brand Maruti high sale is in Kochi. Agent made by Kochi. He got continuously 18, 19 years, you know. the shield the best dealer award so all brands every so how it is now it has flourished maruti limited has flourished now it is purely private so in development of the society 
private participation, public participation. So everything is required. Ultimately, the civil society will have, you know, when the industry comes nearby, you know, people will also be, uh, it will be helpful. Employment opportunity will be there. Wide roads will be there. And uh, so many other commutation, everything will be solved. Many uh, good advantages are also there. Not only that, one person is job working, five people can live comfortably. Okay. So, governance has shifted from un, uh, dimensionally. The governance has shifted from private, government, NGO, whatever is there now, nowadays. Okay? Then, non-territorial. No territory at all nowadays. You know, world has become very, very small. You can operate anywhere. Now, you take the example of IT company, not only in Kerala, yeah, you know, all over the world, they are having the branches and other things. Now, there are challenges, challenges before the civil society. There are challenges before the civil society. The growing importance of the civil society has also brought with the, see what happened here, this uh, chapter. Uh, they are, you know, co correlating the matter with the U.S. and many other countries. So, uh, you know, I had to... Nothing new. I cannot uh, contribute anything. So whatever is there in the book only, I can tell. See, uh, the uh, challenges before the civil society. The growing importance of the civil society has also brought with it a variety of constraints and pressures. Okay. For instance, in India, civil society is seen by most theorists as a volatile uh, association of social grouping. Social grouping. So in India, we... We are we are in a suspicious mentality. Now we are just you know always you know the voluntary organization what type of job they are doing that type of things are there. No, we should not suspect them also. The problem with this kind of formulation and uh, is that it fails to distinguish between uh, counter civil society movement. Society in this perspective is collapsed into civil society. This civil society is thus being treated as a residual category as an authentic collection of everything that is not the state. It has become a conceptual ragbag consisting of household, religious denominations, and each and every activity which is unconnected with the state. Unconnected with... Many groups are there. I see many, many people are there and associations are there. And uh, now here, uh, in fact, the very fact that number of community organizations, voluntary agencies, self-help groups are growing. Non-public, non-market associations are growing in India, as well as in the state. See, self-help groups, non-public, non-marketing market association, voluntary agencies. Okay, these are all number of agencies are now growing considerably. Futuristic perspective. No, in fact, to a large extent, how we conceptualize and evaluate a civil society has been observed or depends on how we visualize democracy. Hello? Democratic wave there to function. Okay? They converse also in democratic political theory privileges. Civil society because it assumes just the existence of democracy. See, I am going to tell this after 5-10 minutes, I am going to tell you democracy versus the private associations. I'm giving a beautiful example. Okay. What is meant for democracy? What is meant? And not only that, you know, how such a private agencies and uh, associations uh, doing good work. And uh, sometimes, you know, it may lead to uh, problems also at a later stage. Now, the increase, these are all part of society, you know. The increasing labeling of civil society as NGOs and vice versa needs to be addressed. See, NGOs always, you know, their work is to be assessed. By, there should be a control and what they are doing, everything, you know, we have to, and we have to give a lot of importance for NGO. They are rendering very good service. There is no doubt about it. And uh, the present day civil society is concerned with uh, more, with the rectifying market state through empowerment of the marginalized uh, this thing and uh, unless a positive and complementary relationship between state administration and society is conceived civil society's role in governance and development will not produce constructive government should also support then civil society also will have 
lot of organizations and other thing for that state government has also uh, to render you know extend help to them other way what they are doing state government has to do this type of things are the now that is community endeavors have become more pertinent with the receding of the state from certain areas and the influx of market association so many associations have taken place uh, you know uh, introduced in the uh, this thing and uh, the uh, many works done by the state now they are also doing that the national and international level also they are doing that to understand the transformative role of civil society is undertones have to be beyond its interlinkage with ngos and the cbo various other indicators are also there in the civil society a well informed and well informing india could bring the necessary change okay now a country rooted in strong civil society tradition could ensure all the prerequisite of good governance namely trans please remember underline this word a country rooted in strong civil society tradition could ensure all the prerequisites prerequisites sorry of good governance namely transparency efficiency accountability participation responsiveness everything i told you earlier this is possible only if condition for a mutually advantageous existence of the state market and community are nurtured and sustained in the present globalization context civil society is relevant for public administration civil society is relevant to for public administration which you are doing okay as a concept of governance the public administration mean governance only hello so has become multi actor centric with the civil society playing an important role along with the state in the market in governance and development okay this is the thing which i want to tell you now i will just tell you one example here democratic development how a case study i am just reading not from the book understand how private uh, organization can effectively play the what state government is supposed to do what type of welfare activities a state government is supposed to do that sometimes private organization also doing and uh, in a democracy what are the setbacks how they have to function the private organization whether they can uh, overtake the state government administration are this thing a real case study and this case study was appeared on uh, that is last uh, friday written by dr rajan gurukal mg vice chancellor former vice chancellor of mg university and uh, he is the vice chairman of kerala higher education council okay now here what happened you know very well we so far we were talking about civil society private uh, you know how they are rendering service for the welfare of the civil society all these things okay many private organizations are also doing corporate social responsibility and not only that there is a separate fund reserved by the uh, corporates for uh, doing good service for uh, corporate in mean, social service and they are allocating certain funds in the, especially for csr activities now here 2020 in kirakambalam 2020 in kirakambalam just see good things afterwards a small you know other side also okay see you uh, the summary perhaps you are knowing that in kira kambalan that is near kakanada in outer, you know in arnakulam district they are doing very good service that kitax the gentleman managing director he was helping and a very good uh, water system uh, road widening building housing employment opportunity 
ally proper lighting garden schools colleges or whatever is there lot of houses he constructed for the uh, citizen and uh, you know vegetable one rupee something rice uh, very uh, you know um, uh, everything is uh, cheaply available best quality item people are generally happy in 2020 all the panchayats you know uh, it is one by 2020 that association it is just started by kitaks uh, okay and uh, generally those who are residing there are generally happy okay now let me read here this is democratic development good governance effective capacity for development a case study and stable coalition now uh, most new parties are not but gangs that split voters and sentiments here you can see that during election time many 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 parties are there small 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 parties are there and they are you know sometimes they are behaving like gangs also they are having their own, their own ideologies also most new parties are not the parties but gangs and rajan gurugula has written that fragmented voters on sentiment democracy fails we are talking about democracy fails when people are fragmented by multiple sentimental identities along caste community religion locality etc they become a political gangs rather than political party gangs may gain reputation based on what they provide others please listen you know to whatever i am just telling see gangs may gain representation based on what they provide others now 2020 was an indicator that they had see please uh, mr don't misunderstand we are doing very good service to the people to the society of that well uh, kidakambalam please uh, don't misunderstand they are doing very good service but listen but in english word is dangerous sometimes but word is dangerous you know in english to hear 2020 was an indicator that the mainstream political parties had left gaps in governance model and failed to take up corruption as a key they they felt people are fed up with the corruption and many other things you know so we want to get rid of this type of parties and other things you know every party is doing a lot of corruption and people are fed up so 2020 not a different from their apolitical gangs in effect despite its efforts to do bureaucratic bureaucratic governance and check corruption so they are avoiding corruption everything and uh, lacking in uh, in a large larger social perspective they are looking out for social perspective it is apolitical they are not political politically affiliated and a third party that thing is we are neither this party or that party they are independent so what happened here Uh, they are telling the people commi- committed to social justice they are committed to social justice and general well being should grow a critical inside is with the broad front not as dissident of vested interest the problem with the 2020 is that in cons- it consists of critical outsiders of civil society activism who at the best can become social democrats it cannot write large as a party and sustain itself without affiliation to the front of secular and democratic values explaining that group formation is a strategy to enhance the bargaining strength for securing personal power that it fragments the party as power distributed among um, sub units of vested interests fragment fragments do not mean a polit- political plurality what uh, is segmented into multiple groups 
weakened the democratic front. Okay, democratic front. The left, now here, left and uh, Congress government front, left and Congress fronts have contingently uh, transformed into a coalition of conflicting interests by admitting all kind of parties indiscriminately. All parties, you know, they are joining and, you know, and they are having different ideology, both parties. The electoral democracy works only if people come broadly under two parties divided on the basis of two antagonistic social perspectives presupposing mutually incompatible political program, socialism and capitalism. So, here uh, what he is telling that, uh, okay, socialism, uh, parties with the differences unite on certain common agenda on the principle of uh, short-term collaboration. Short-term collaboration against long-term conflicts. Okay, admitting all kinds of parties indiscriminately into these major parties, each front is contingently transformed into a coalition of conflicting interests. The problem with the 2020 is that it consists of critical outsiders of civil society activism who at best can become social democrats. So here, what I'm telling, many people are forming, private parties are also there, and uh, you know, so many other parties are also there, they are rendering a lot of service. Now, what is the problem? They started with uh, providing good facility to the people. But here now, they are contesting election now. They are contesting election, already filed a nomination, many people are contesting uh, for uh, this thing. Now, when you join a political party, you know what is going to happen. So far, they were rendering very good service to the uh, people and uh, afterwards they uh, contested for uh, Panjayat election, they won. Uh, many uh, you know, council, uh, this thing, you know, what they won. Now, finally, they are, uh, uh, you know, contesting uh, our legislative assembly election also in Kochi. We, we, uh, we for Kochi or something like that. Here also, that, that type of front is there. So, whatever, let them do whatever they want. But uh, afterwards, you know, uh, they should uh, continue to do good work to the society. They should help the government and they should not overtake the government this thing. Democratic way they have to function and uh, they are not above law. That is also the, without the government support and they should always remember that they are functioning within Cochin Corporation, within Kerala state, each and every day to see that and uh, they should not think whatever they want they can do. But let them do social service and Supply vegetable, everything cheaper, right? And uh, serve the people. No problem at all. If, if people are happy, we are all happy. But in a democratic way. But the way, sometimes, you know, it is controlled by one or two, uh, you know, industrialists. When industries are controlling, you know what will happen afterwards. One is controlled by uh, this thing. Then afterwards, now, Kocho Sahib Chitilipalli is the chairman. He's a very nice man. So far, uh, they were doing very good job. Let us hope that they will continue to do such good work in future as well. Yes, unit 20. Any doubt afterwards you can ask. Read definition of conflict resolution. Hello. Now, you should remember that if you are in the house, if you are in the factory, wherever you are, Conflict take place. How it is happening? How to resolve those? One problem solving skill should be there. And uh, conflict, conflict. You can see that you know. And when Congress party nominated so many conflicts, was there? Umman Jandi was running pillar to pillar to solve that issue. But that man is having problem solving skill. The same way in our life also, conflict may arise. And we should have the conflict, you know, that problem-solving skill also. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here, an organization, a, a system consciously coordinated activities, okay, of two or more persons, okay, that faces challenges of maintaining equilibrium between divergent personal needs and organization. 
each and everybody has got different view. Whatever I am telling, you may not agree. Whatever you are telling, I may not agree. Then God will not take place. If whatever one party is telling, other party will not agree. Again, conflict will take place. Okay. Whatever your both is telling, you will oppose. Again, conflict take place. Whatever husband tell, wife will not agree. Again, conflict take place. Whatever you say to your child, children, they will not agree. They again, conflict take place. This is part of our life. Okay. Now, conflict is an ever present, ever present process of human relation. Conflicts are often an integral part of social dynamics and the engine of social and political development. Okay. Conflict may define, maintain, and strengthen uh, group boundaries. Okay. Contributing to the group distinctiveness and increasing group solidarity and cohesion. See, what happened nowadays, you know, in IT, group uh, uh, dynamics, you know, uh, you are working in a group, you know, so and so, five, six people or something like that. So there may be sometimes, you know, what are you are telling, uh, group leader is telling, you may not agree, what are you are telling, group leader will not agree. There will be conflict, I agree, but ultimately, you have to work, you have to have certain resolution, you know, that uh, some, some, some understanding between members and other thing or group leader, whatever is there. And ultimately, you have to deliver. That is a group of efforts. That is called group dynamic. Okay. Your personality always plays a vital role. Understanding others, you know, the extending cooperation to others, your presentation style, domain knowledge, everything is procured. Okay. So, for uh, resolving conflict, you know, this type of things are required. Without your thorough knowledge, if you are in a company, you are facing a lot of problems. Suppose you are handling HR person, person a human, what is the personal management, you are personal administration, you are facing, you may face a lot of problems, you know, a lot of problems. So don't worry about that, you know, I am not discouraging. But what are problems uh, you are facing that we have to amicably Settle it down. So, um, you know, uh, uh, resolve those issues. Eh? There lies your managerial ability. Many decades ago, decades ago, uh, I just I, I got an opportunity to come to Trivandrum to attend a meeting in Muscat Hotel. And uh, from Chandigarh all the way, I traveled. Eh? One some national seminar or something like that. Karunagaram was the chief minister at that time. He was the chief guest or something like that. And I remember at that time when I was attending, uh, why I am telling this is a lesson to you. And uh, see, other things you can learn from the book, uh, read from the book. The practical experience I am telling you, it may help your future assignments. So when I was interacting with the people, participants, I got an opportunity to meet the managing director of Herbert's Unlimited. And it is the largest uh, distillery or something in, at that time in Kerala, very big company, and he was the managing director, some main owner or something like that. So during in, uh, lunch time or something, I just asked uh, the gentleman, sir, is there any opportunity in Kerala that, uh, you know, so that I can come from um, you know, come to my hometown, to home state. So he told, uh, which is your field? I told this. So it is a troublesome job. Because the most difficult job in Kerala is personal management. That is because each and every union uh, company is having multi, you know, a lot of unions are there and you have to tackle those situations. And we cannot misguide the workers in Kerala and people are knowing very well even yesterday's judgment also they will bring even today to personal manager in other states we can misguide and here it is not possible so uh, uh, personal manager should you know be well equipped with uh, the current knowledge judgments and various labor laws and other things so domain knowledge everything is okay so any type of conflict resolution your knowledge skill ability everything negotiating power, everything is, you know, take it easy, you know, all problems, you know, whether it is workers or whatever, a lot of issues may arise. So you will have 
you know, I don't want to because of how I resolved many, many major issues. There is no time to tell because only two hours are the major issues. Within five, ten minutes, I resolved. Uh, uh, at a time later stage, if time permits, I will tell you. So the thing, there is no problem at all. Everything can be resolved by you know uh, our interaction with the subordinate, the, with the trade union, with other people. If it is so nice, and we can tackle any type of situation. Give and take, well, the policy should be there. And not only that, you should be, you should not cro uh, violate any of the rules laid down by the company. I'm not telling like that. But your managerial ability, you can solve any type of issues. That's what I learned uh, three, four decades, more than four decades or four and a half years, four and a half decades. I experience, I'm telling nothing is impossible. Okay, so personal manager, you should not worry. But the ability should be the knowledge to be there to handle any type of job. Okay, so here, so conflict also destroys group conflict also group con conflict may take place realignment one group to another group okay but here also you can see that you know while during while taking dinner in you are in one party and break was you uh, when you have to take break was you will be in some other party within just you know eight hours you know you will change the party like that same way group also changes conflict also will you know uh, will be changed sometimes you know conflict at uh, workplace can hamper, hamper both, and so it is. Everybody is interested that conflict is resolved am effectively. Yes, a personal administration professionals, I, I will not tell student. It is your duty that you should not allow any type of grievances of employees or workers, whatever is there, to grow. You have to resolve the issue amicably without wasting much time. Alangal Pala Tulli Periwalam. Any my normal is other Pala Dulli Periwalam. Cherry over issue in the solve with the lingle other wally issue at Pranamikin. Pin a manager and butter the view. Okay. Abadunda Cherry issues, I'm a serious address, I'm a solve. I mean, resolve. If it is not possible, just explain to me. It is not possible. See, the quality of the personal administrator is that. What is possible, what is not possible, you should tell to the worker. There should not be any misunderstanding. All problem, conflict, communication plays a vital role. If communication is flowing properly, you are interacting with the people, then there won't be any problem. Now, when they raise any demands or whatever is there, what I used to do, I'm giving you one small dose, you know, and uh, they will bring many, many uh, you know, charter of demands uh, as a HR manager. So what happened? I will just, uh, 10 o'clock, you know, I will, uh, uh, 10 to 10.30 was reserved for a union. And uh, afterwards, you know, my recruitment gathering. I will not entertain any anybody after 10.30 a.m. Union, they are supposed to come from 10 to 10.30. And I was having separate cabin to uh, discuss with them. And uh, what happened? When they come, when they come, immediately I will offer a cup of tea uh, to all union members, you know, who are uh, office bearers. And afterwards, they will uh, uh, show me, I will just give, uh, they will give some uh, chart or demand. And I will say, this is possible, this is not possible. This is possible, I will try. I will try. If I say I will try, they know that I will do it. If I say, if I say, they, if I say no, they, if I say no, they know that they will not be able to, they, uh, nothing will be done. Nothing will be done. Because I will justify, I, I, I will justify uh, them that, you know, why it is not possible. It is connected with the pay revision or whatever is there, and um, uh, that the government approval is required. Everything, and I will explain to them, and um, uh, there will not be any confusion even between us. So there will be there will not be any conflict. So they may go back uh, happy in happy mood. They 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 may go back with happy mood, and they will not bring any uh, you know anomalies later on. And uh, uh, they can also see they also want to. Uh, give certain answers to the union members actually. So there were uh, always, you know, it is um, 
we a cordial way we have to interact give and take policy should be there and uh, what is possible what is not possible we have to explain and uh, then if there is communication problem then definitely conflict we are not informing them properly about the management decisions then problem may arise and uh, so all problems are created by communication gap whether it is india pakistan war whether it is your household matter whether it is something else a company or whatever is there are problem you know it is related to the communication so flow of communication should be there properly the policies are no longer made in isolation concern of international community are reflected in the policy uh, process of any country for example the carpet industry in see what about men we why the conflict you know we are all interdependent when we have to do something and uh, always uh, what happen we we want somebody help also so suppose if you want to export something we want export uh, export license in a quality clearance or whatever is there so if we are interdependent actually we are you know customer vendor everybody you know interrelated matters actually it is there for example economic consideration have forced the countries to form association like g20 g20 that it is there in their book how many if you want i can tell you what is g20 and g8 country that is canada france germany japan russia russia now suspended eh? uk usa italy that is g18 and g20 already it is there you can see that which are the countries so they they are all association then asian countries sar countries it is already elaborated in our this thing which are the country okay they are all uh, formed for with for certain specific objective then potential conflict see the conflict may be sm sometimes small uh, conflict may take place sometimes large conflict may take place so conflict whether it is small or big you you have to resolve you have to resolve amicably then dimension of conflict see you have to see the conflict dimension so if it is big you have to understand the dimension actually see suppose india pakistan war is there. so something happens you know the dimension of conflict is severe okay if you are uh, you know uh, that is international issue okay that uh, dimension of conflict is different actually the same way but small conflict will be the dimension we have to see how much complex complicated it is that also we have to see now work boundaries work of boundaries i will tell you one case study uh work boundaries afterwards i will tell you one beautiful this thing for doing work also there is boundaries as per the constitution of india as per the constitution of india there is a provision that you are likely to serve anywhere in india you can select any type of job you can uh, you know settle down anywhere in india but certain work boundaries are there that i will tell you with certain case study may create problem which threats boundaries arises over job description incompatible or unclear line dispute and disputes over work territory work territory underline this word i am going to tell one small case study about this work territory so jurisdictional disputes jurisdiction and the disputes are also there and group tend to protect all these things are there now here i will uh, just uh, tell you work boundaries and uh, jurisdictional disputes how the uh, our people are going to suffer and our government is not bothered neither the central government nor the state government is not bothered about this peculiar problem which may arise which may create a very very dangerous way it will develop later, later on if you want i will just elaborate what it is what is what is work boundary just listen it is not from the book 23 listen as per the constitution of india we can work anywhere that is the thing you can go to jammu kashmir assam or wherever is there okay no problem at all now see the latest development latest development the haryana government has uh, recently passed legislation that mandate 
companies in Haryana, that is private companies in Haryana, to provide jobs to local Haryana Vs first before hiring people from other states. Don't think that it is applicable for Haryana. Uh, see, this is not applicable to Haryana. Remember, only first line I read. Now, the unemployment rate in Haryana is the highest of all states in India as per data from the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Indian Economy. A whopping 80% of women in Haryana who want to work cannot find a job. 80% of women in Haryana who want to do the job is not finding a job. Then half of all graduates in Haryana are jobless. Don't think that is for Haryana. Now coming to other states. Okay. Now the job situation in Haryana is staggering dismal. Now politically, 11 out of 18 million voters of Haryana do not have a regular job. Okay. World history wants us that when such a vast majority of adults are jobless, it inevitably leads to social revolutions and political upheavals. So it is entirely understandable that democratically elected Haryana government panicked and chose to reserve the new few available jobs for its own voters, whether it is private company, whether it is government company, are these things. Okay. They are reserving the post for job for how much? 80%. They, they want to? Yes. Do? Uh, yes, correct. 80%. And private companies also. Only for Haryana. Which. Now here, what happened? So it is entirely understa understandable that the democratically elected Haryana government panicked and choose to reserve the few available job for its own orders. If you go for job there, you will not get job. Now listen, Haryana is not only alone in this contrary. The cabinet of the government of Jharkhand approved a similar legislation to reserve job for Jharkhand residents. Next, the most dangerous. The Dravida Munnetta Kalagan DMK or in Tamil Nadu announced a similar proposal or reserve, reservation of jobs for Tamilan people in its manifesto for the upcoming assembly election. Many states in India have embarked on this nativism adventure to protect the interest of the vast number of their jobless locals. So, uh, you know, I don't want to elaborate the thing. So job creation is the responsibility of the state as well as the center. State cannot have create any uh, this thing. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, you know, more jobs actually. And uh, one more thing, the chief minister of a state in India has limited control over the management of the larger economy and thereby attract new investors. And, you know, one uh, largest setback is that now, many Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, many other states, you know, they are uh, they are inviting people to invest the money, invest, uh, in, uh, you know, start uh, industries in uh, Telangana, Maharashtra, whatever is there. But now, uh, biggest hurdle, I want to summarize, I don't want to elaborate the thing, very many uh, things are there. GST, see, for starting any industry, you have to give some relaxation in taxes and, uh, you know, electricity exemption, whatever is there, you know. I, uh, because, you know, when I was working in Chandigarh, we gave only one rupee for 150 acres of land. Eh? We gave one rupee to the government and free electricity, water, everything uh, for setting up that industry there. One rupee we gave. Land they gave free, everything. Now, first of all, here, there's no land. Another thing, how can you give uh, relaxation for industries to come here? Because tax concession you cannot give because all are undercovered under GST it is controlled by central government. So, state, if you, if, the, if at all they want to give any uh, 
you know, relaxation. Even, you know, the uh, petrol, diesel prices of the state government has not reduced a single paisa. Because the revenue is going to state. What are central government, uh, request for state government to reduce? No. So, here, if at all they want to give any type of relaxation to, you know, the new entrepreneurs, they will not be able to do so because tax or concession they cannot give because GST is controlled by state government, central government. These type of things are there. So, uh, instead of, um, you know, uh, telling this type of thing, I only want to say that uh, unless the state government and central government, irrespective of any party, they have to think about the future of Indian younger generation. They, they have to start industries make uh, you know that industrial you know, investment environment and job opportunities because previously people were going abroad now there is no job there in gulf countries and other things here also there is no factory i already gave today morning one one good article for the last 10 20 years not even a single factory all are we are very eager to close the existing factory we are not eager to open any industry we are eager to close how many examples you want to you want FSET is a unit, HMT is a unit, IT, uh, ITI is a unit, instrumentation limited is a secure unit, every Indusan paper is a secure unit, Indusan uranium corporation is a that uh, Chavara, that is also secure unit, titanium in the, uh, that is also secure unit, which is good unit. So we have to make that uh, company viable for that we have to invest additional money skilled labels are required and uh, we should not many units in kalamashiri is the highest you know uh, in in kerala kalamashiri is the having the highest unit and uh, kanji code palakkad is the second both area many many units are closed and 90 percent of the units are closed due to various reasons so big industry should come so that our graduates postgraduates or whoever it is they can do uh, they can uh, you know uh, provide uh, uh, i think you know they, they can work and they can say uh, instead of going I, to where are you going outside uh, state also situations like this i already explained that. Many states are passing, uh, taking decision like this. Most probably, DMK will come next election. That today's survey show that the DMK policy is that to give provide a job for only Tamilans. So where are you going? Jharkhand is like that. Haryana is like that. No other party also will do that. So where will go? So our state government, central government, everybody has to seriously think about that so that our future generation, our young people, can get. There. Suitable job. So, conflict I already told you. Then uh, conflict over huh, conflict over policies. Co conflict over policies. I am just telling you one thing. Uh, recently, I have seen again that uh, two three days back that uh, in uh, Indian Institute of Management, Indian Institute of Technology, everything, the reservation policy is not complied with at all. Faculty members, SC, ST, OBC, no faculty in IAM by Bangalore. Sorry, Ahmedabad, only, you know, many, many vacancies are uh, there and uh, they are not taken. So policies are something, implementation is something, government takes some policy, implementation is not there, then what is the use? Okay, so some policies, now agriculture policy, you know what is happening in North India. So before taking decision, government should discuss with the stakeholders so that they can implement each and everything. When you say that IT company or private company, whatever I told just now, to have reservation, everything. I am not telling that don't give any reservation. See, don't think like that. I am against that. No. Private company will not listen to that. They want work. They are functioning for commercial purpose. Protection is required. And the profit they want. For loss making, they will not uh, start any business. So this type of obligation, government social security is the duty of the central government or state governments to see private companies 
are they they are doing and not the, the some companies are doing but if you insist this type of thing to private company they will close down the private company they will shift from one state to another state this is the thing which is happening many companies wanted to do start the you know trade union activities in it company they, they told that we will close this and we will shift from here to because many uh, state is giving offering good land and other thing come there so we'll go there like that so unemployment problem may arise here several thousand people are working that type of things are so the situation is so complicated and multi uh, you know problems are, are there and we have to con think over it in a pro concentrate and not only that we should have a great vision vision is not the that is the reason why we are all suffering that is the thing quality 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 of education quality of education whatever quality quality of education means who, who has to give the quality of education government has to support government has to give the grant government has to pay the salary okay so this type of things are there now quality will be there for that from the ground level you know that uh, this thing you know uh, education the standard has to maintain and all of a sudden only up to 10th 12th standard uh, if you concentrate without any basic the building will collapse without any foundation so education if you want to improve from the down level on so you have to try 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 and bring and with good faculty effective faculty qualified faculty and uh, we have to make uh, uh, you know their service condition also secured then only they will be able to happily deliver what our teaching obligations are there so conflict i already told you now see here what i'm mm -hmm. teaching i am just telling you people are having multi problems you know to classroom delivery is not effective because students are coming from rural areas and other thing many many problems are there and education qualification many other things are there uh, they are not getting teachers are also not getting salary and many other things are there. here another setback is that students are also coming from rural area and teachers are also not getting salary support they will not be you know from their mind you know because it is a disappointment because when when i go back to my house you know a lot of obligations are uh, you know father will be sick or uh, the children will be sick or husband will be sick or we have to take care of no money and other thing that type of mental tension may take place for teacher and uh, he, uh, he or she will not be able to deliver effectively in the classroom this type of things are the then so many other students are also come from background where various background and we have to uh, you know lot of things we have to do and uh, so there is post conflict then uh, we should not allow the conflict to you know escalation should not be there and uh, you know this type of thing we have to keep in mind okay we have to recall the uh, wherever conflict it is normal everywhere it is happening but uh, so here whenever a conflict takes place you have to acknowledge it is, have to, it is this is an issue we first of all you have to find that whenever some grievances or conflict take place you have to take it okay it is a really conflict and we have to see that. what is the problem so how what is the remedy then analysis of the existing situation so at present what it is analyze the problem and take remedial step next facilitation of communication yes vertical communication horizontal communication downward upward whatever is there and uh, you know that type of communication the in, uh, communication should should flow from the top to bottom bottom to top and uh, you know horizontal communication everything should be there negotiation i already told you then provision for necessary adjustment you have to adjust also sometimes conflict you know give and take always you cannot solve any issue without having certain you know adjustment actually you have to accept their suggestions also to a certain extent then they will also agree to your suggestion 100 percent you know you cannot succeed some give and take policy should be there we, then will you know, economy cannot be resolved see realization of living without conflict you cannot live in this world without any conflict mukesh ambani who is a richer person is not having any conflict Tomorrow, what is going to share market? What is he always is wondered, you know. So conflict is a 
part of our life and the realization of living with the conflicts as odd conflict cannot be resolved certain conflict cannot be resolved but there are conflict which can be resolved also so this type of thing there is tough conflict sometimes when you go to office heavy task will be there the branch manager has to take investment of so many people he, uh, he is in uh, uh, high tension that you know unless I complete the tar target. I will not get promotion or whatever is it. That type of things are also taking place, and mental, uh, mentally they are becoming sick also. And every private company, uh, banks, you know that heavy task is given. Private company, even IT company, heavy task is given. That's why up to two o'clock people are working. They are getting remuneration, but the mental peace is not there because of high task set for them. Okay. capacity building people's participation integrated conflict management strengthening uh, another aspect which i want to tell you is that we are having lot of institutions in our uh, state like uh, for resolving issues say same nammude uh, women endha enna parayam uh vanitha commission is there youth commission is there so many social welfare uh, this thing is the so many commissions are there. so commission should if they become either chairman chairperson or whatever is there irrespective of any state uh, any party or whatever is there they should function properly and they have to take care of each and every problems raised by the common citizen properly not say that this is from that party this is from this party no you are getting salary from the taxpayer so the institution should be strengthened and they should be given empowered to do to take certain they should give certain they should be given certain delegation of powers to take certain decision so institution should be strengthened there are many institute in the state as well as the country that strengthening is required then central coordinating then monitoring is required then monitoring system capacity building then everything is possible because of you know due participation of each and everybody civil society organization that is there were thousands of civil society organization self help groups okay then faith based faith based organization global organization regional organization national level organization okay civil society organization okay then for example it was the instance of cso both india and global the gujarat chief minister at that time mr narendra modi was denied visa for the visit of usa as he was thought of a perpetrator of genocide of members of a particular community so see here civil society that imagination or whatever is once upon a time many 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 years back when he was the chief minister he was not given visa by usa government but now the situation has changed considerably so this type of things are there always conflict may take by similarly there were many examples of active partnership cso cso means civil society organization because they are pressurizing the government they are influencing the government in certain way and uh, okay then international organization wto montreal protocol to safeguard the environment environment ozone depleting sub ozone then montreal protocol then uh, you know dispute settlement committee or wto and the uh, multinational corporations and then one more thing maharashtra increasing globalization expanded nowadays lot of foreign companies are also participating in india and uh, multinational companies are coming to india india is also investing money uh, you know setting up many establishment all over the world for example in maharashtra many years back this is very old news actually very old news you are book uh, that is you when know, this is this has happened in 1976 when i was working in bombay now see now it has it is appearing in your book okay 1976 it was uh, uh, i was witness to it when i was in bombay 76 that matter is coming now see here maharashtra government the bold power corporation has set up power plant in maharashtra but failure of its operation created conflict in that is three stakeholders enron company maharashtra state company central government corruption is involved in that project finally the due to corruption by the enron company and the 
uh, everything opposition raised by uh, you know uh, many newspapers they reported the you know corruption cases and afterward maharashtra government withdrew then you know, stopped this uh, uh, you know contract with the enron company usa finally enron company went for arbitration and uh, it was resort uh, afterwards you know through uh, because they also invested a lot of money arbitration and other thing and finally through arbitration the matter was settled no for reducing resolving conflicts through negotiation we can resolve the uh, disputes conflicts through mediation we can do that okay mediation by eminent personalities okay negotiation by uh, that you know having good power then afterwards if mediation through negotiation if it is not possible then arbitration what is arbitration either the courts or we are mutual trust we are appointing a third party to negotiate uh, do the arbitration only in this case uh, both parties they have to incur expenditure they have to give money to arbitrator the fees or whatever is there but arbitrator he will be a neutral person and whatever uh, decision he is taking it is binding on both party that is arbitration I, I, otherwise the court also appoint arbitrator so thus we can conclude that con conflict is bound to occur in any situation uh, or place where interest or goals collide conflict resolution has to be integral part of any organization if very where conflict is there ranging from micro to many small or big conflict resolution is managed by a system and legal manner sometimes conflict has to be settled in a legal way consumer protection group so many other forums are there see women wing is there youth wing is there you know so many other things are there no? so uh, there is uh, government constituted certain body through them also we can do scst bodies uh, you know okay there is a tribunal also the commission also scst commission is there so they are all you know uh, the, uh, this type of uh, you know, conflict you know they will be able to take a decision they are having the power so uh, conflict can also be used strategy to social change so here another thing narmada bachao andolan that is narmada river that uh, construction of dam uh, increase in the height of this thing meha meda parker she did the satyagra that uh, there was a dispute uh, this thing lot of day in many days you know she went on strike or whatever is there andolan and there was a dispute uh, and um, they because they told that uh, if the height of the, the, the this thing narmada dam is increasing the lower level people who are residing there will have you know that everything will be banished and a lot of houses everything will be destroyed so agitation was there that conflict was there then finally it took a lot of time to resolve to a certain extent only to not amicable to a certain extent the way i told you previously uh, our um, chipko movement that is uh, our uh, tehri dam again the same problem because the dam will create uh, earth cake uh, there will be earth cake in himalayan belt and sundaralal uh, bahuguna went on strike and nira uh, satyagraha uh, and here another conflict you can see that a very 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 recent development sometime back two years back you you are not, you know that uh, anna azare lokpal bill passing that you know he went on uh, satyagraha or something like that you know he did uh, satyagraha in delhi and uh, the fantastic thing is that afterwards you know uh, in that satyagraha our uh, arvind kejriwal participated and afterwards he became the chief minister and uh, he sidelined anna azare you see so conflict was to start uh, to implement the lokpal system in the country that was the motive uh, of uh, anna azare corruption eradication but the advantage kejriwal took that advantage afterwards continuously he is becoming the chief minister of delhi okay this type of conflict has a very interesting also okay no established okay gandhi and okay but one thing always the uh, when, whenever such agitation takes place we to follow the gandhi in principle sometime protest that one boycott that sometime sit in with sometime violence also take place sometimes you know kodangulam and other things you know uh, so many sometimes you know, big 
violent means or only at the end, you know. If something is not happening, then violent, okay. But peaceful way, Gandhi in principle, you know, we are uh, ahimsa, Siddhanta Dilana, these people are doing that. So, conflict not, if conflict is not managed properly or delayed, disinterest, lack of action, extreme cases, this type of things, you know, unnecessary will create problems. See, conflict is not managed promptly. Otherwise, if you are showing disinterest, lack of action, extreme cases and other things, you know, and if you are not unwilling to solve the issue, this will create problem and group action by the aggrieved person. So the goal of conflict management then is to increase the positive results. Conflict resolution means to resolve the problem amicably and to create the positive result. So, while reducing the negative ones, okay, this, uh, this is the, the, in this unit we are, how to solve the conflict, what type of ability we should have, how, what are the steps we have to take to resolve those issues, and, uh, you know, a small case, when it is not resolved, or if it is not listened to properly, it may create a, as a big issue, then it will be difficult to manage also sometimes. So these are the things covered under this chapter.